All right, how's it going? Uh, welcome, it is actually a uh, random fact for you. Straight off the bat, it's Valentine's Day, right? Today, whilst I'm filming this. I didn't get you a card, but just know that I always love you. Uh, Mrs. Barry actually got me some chocolate oranges things, which is a theme for today's video. A lot of you guys say to me, Barry, how do you come up with ideas? One, I am one of the most creative people in the world. Uh, two, I just get ideas. Some are not so good, some are better, and obviously uh, that doesn't even make sense, and other times you guys help me out as well. Sometimes the name of a video comes to me before what the actual video is, and in today's instance, it could not be any more the thing. I wanted to do a video where for some reason, and I don't know why, it's ridiculous, this is great, like I just wanted to use 321, like 321, um, but then I thought, let's take it up a notch, yeah? Like seven minute abs and all that stuff. Let's do four, three, two, one. So today I'm going to be showing you four three ingredient recipes to try at least once in your life. You like what I did there? Um, and we're doing it proper. I've seen ingredients in the past, recipes where it's like five ingredient whatever. And one of the ingredients is water that's not in the ingredients list. And that to me isn't cheating. But to you, some of you guys in the comments box will be like, that is cheating. So we're gonna keep it proper. If we're using water, that is one of our three. And the other cool thing, rather than doing all mains, all sweets, we are doing a drink, a starter, a main, and a dessert. So this is kind of like a 12 ingredient, four course thing, including your drink, yes, yes. We'll start with honey, where's the bottle? Honey lemonade. So we've got honey, lemons, that's it. And the third ingredient, yes, is water. So here's what we're gonna do. This is my Wizzy high powered chopper blendery thing, also known as a Bullet Nutri, and lots of other brands are available. This isn't actually one of those, but it does the same thing. It's very high powered spinny blades. Now what I'm gonna do for the moment is take three lemons. Now if you want, you do not have to do this. I am putting the whole lemons in there. I'm gonna drizzle in my honey. So I'm gonna go for, that's about one tablespoon. Oh, look at it run down. That looks great. So the water is going in. I've got a litre here, but I'm only going to go about 400 mils because we want to just whiz it up first of all. And in fact, we're going to pray that <laughs> it does. I might have wedged them in too much and then we can tweak it. It got that one bit of lemon. That's well cloudy. I think I might have shaved it. <laughs> I have. All right, okay, okay. We'll, we'll do it in little batches. It's like one of those things, I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked in uh, customer service and you sort of do that line, oh, that's no problem, when really to you, it's a huge problem and you're just being really, really polite. So we've taken half of the lemon amount out. Let's make sure they're not wedged up. Actually, I might just slice them. Oh, come on, there we go. Smooth as a baby's bum. All right, so we'll get the other bits in there. Remember, we've still got two lemons, but that's more to tweak the flavor. It's all about just getting it in there first of all. Beautiful. So remember, at this stage, we're just going over the top with the lemony taste, and I'm passing mine through a sieve because it will get rid of any of the little naughty gubbins, but if you want it zesty, if you want that little bit of texture, just leave it in there, don't worry about it. You see, you're left with this pulpy stuff, which I say, it can go in there. I would prefer that, but I wanna show you both ways. But what we've got in here is kind of like a smooth lemony syrup, and I've got some on the worktop as well, but that's fine. In here, we can now tweak this. So this is gonna be quite bitter. Yeah, it's actually not so bad, but we do need to add a bit more sweetener and dilute the taste a little bit. So first, just to take that sharpness away, we'll start to add in about 100 mils of water at a time. Little squirt extra of honey. Oh, it's nearly there. It's really best to do it in stages because you don't want to lose that lemoniness. All right, I'm bringing it up so I've got about a litre of total fluid now from the water. So that's nearly all of it used up. We'll make a large amount, so we might as well go for it. Oh. That is, it's February and I wanna be sat outside with like a, an umbrella in my drink. That is good. And I'm just gonna say it again, some of you will try this and be like, oh my gosh, that's so bitter, but please 
change the ratio of the water and the honey to your liking and you will find one that fits. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? And of course, because uh, three ingredients, the lemon still fits in. Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's kind of blended in with Homer. There we go. Nice honey lemonade, still cloudy, beautiful. This cake, which could blow my mind, uh, we'll do next because it takes, oh my gosh. This cake is three ingredients. My favorite thing in the world on Christmas day for years, I've told you this before, my mum will get me a Terry's chocolate orange rather than a tangerine. We need Terry's chocolate orange, we need butter, and we need eggs. That is it. So into a large bowl, we are gonna get eight eggs. There we go. So here are three chocolate oranges. You could use any type of chocolate you want. Mint chocolate, uh, what? Uh, and we want about 450 grams, so about a pound. So we've got a little bit over. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, on the top of a Terry's chocolate orange, it used to say tap and unwrap. And half the challenge was actually going, <laughs> tapping it, and then you'd go like this, you'd go like this. <laughs> it's a struggle today, isn't it? And then it would sort of open up. And sometimes, in fact, yeah, they've still got it. They have the stump still, but like they're already segmented, which is good for us. A few of these, actually, in fact, we're gonna need most of it. And just, <laughs> I think we're gonna need nearly all of it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that'll do. So I've got two segments left, but I've got an additional chocolate orange for garnishing. So yeah, you don't need to tap anymore. Look, you go like that, you guys, oh no, you do a little bit. Why doesn't it say tap and unwrap? Ugh, ugh. I guess it's got hot in my house. There you go. All right, so grab yourself. A saucepan. The heck? Pan down. Medium low flame. If only I had a massive chunk of butter, 110 grams to one side. Oh yes I do. In that goes. This is dedicated to anyone that's watching called Terry. And that includes Terry Hatcher. So we're gonna melt it through. We're gonna end up with a gorgeous chocolate orange buttery lake. And of course, one other step, which I think my saucepan lid is kind of praying, I wish I did. Uh, you could have done this in the microwave on 30 second blast, stirring as you go until it's all melted and smooth. All right, so this is our chocolate orange mixture melted into that butter. I've taken it off the heat so it's still warm, but we will let it cool down just a teeny weeny bit. So I'm gonna move it just up here. Boom. So it's obviously the fats and the sugars are gonna come from the chocolate orange and the butter, but so it's here that's gonna hold it together and also give it the rise. So we need to whisk this for a good 10 minutes. Boom, you see how bubbly that is? That's like a bubble bath when you're a kid, you wanna jump in that with your rubber duck. Out of shot here, you'll see I have got the chocolate orange mix. I'm going to add a little bit of this in at a time, literally about that amount, like a tablespoonful max. And once it's all in there, we keep adding. This is kind of therapeutic. Boom. Now believe it or not, that is the batter for this cake. It's a lot wetter than normal batter. It does bake for a long time. So this is a loose bottom tray. You don't necessarily need to have a loose bottom one. So get a little bit of butter around the sides. Go grease like in, I'm greasing up my baking tin. Boom. Actually, whilst we got there, I had a Sharpie in my hand. I'm like, why have I got a Sharpie in my hand? Uh, we're gonna just do a very rough outline. That's very rough. <laughs> like a glove. Or a piece of baking parchment cut to size whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure if you can see how foamy that is on the top still, that's beautiful. We're gonna pour this mix into our tin. Oh my gosh. Oh, I haven't pre my oven. Damn it. <laughs> my oven is at 180C fan or 200C non-fan, okay? It's gonna take 45 minutes. My experience of doing cakes like that before where you're not using flour and you're using the egg, sometimes you get like a really good rise at first and when you take it out of the oven, it does deflate slightly. So it might look a bit more like a tort, 
but that's cool. Just had a bit of a boo-boo, folks. Um, because I used a loose bottom tin, some of it's dripped down into the next row, so I've put it on a baking tray that's lined with a seal pad or just baking parchment. So make sure you don't get any leakage. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it really will be a lot lower than you're expecting. All right, so for our three ingredient appetizer slash starter, we're going for bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. Sometimes they come in a breadcrumb, but we're doing the bacon wrapped vibe and there's a lot of flavor going on. So by sticking like hardcore to this three ingredient thing, no salt and pepper, no rub or seasoning or anything like that, you have to try and find some workarounds in the supermarket. And there are some ways, even the bacon, I've got some proper, real nice, super smoked bacon, so maximum flavor in that. I mean, the jalapenos are, are just that. It's just really a shell, but you could do it with a pepper or something like that. And I struck gold in the supermarket. So uh, this is just one brand of cream cheese. Other brands are available, but they did lots of other ones. They did a salt and pepper one. They did a herb one. They did sweet chili, caramelized onion. So that's already in this cream cheese. So I'm gonna ram that into there and wrap the bacon around it. Mwah. All right, so all I'm gonna do is slice the lid off the top like that. Remember, don't, if you're touching any of these seeds and stuff, don't rub your eyes, wash your hands, all that stuff. I'm gonna halve it. You can do this with a knife, but another way to do it is to just grab a spoon and scrape it all out. Just push it there and get a little bit of that whitey membrane stuff, which I don't really like. And they say you can do that as neat as you want, but I mean, that is it. You're effectively making uh, a green witch's nose or a, a green boat. There you go. I'm not going to do this very pretty. I'm just going to push the cream cheese in just so it feels it. We then take a strip of bacon and we're going to just roll it at a slight angle so it hopefully covers most of it. So these are now on a lined baking tray, which is perfect because, bear with me, do, do, do. and when I say that, there is not a bear with me in the room. There is a Mr. Bean and a Homo Carbo cutout, as standard. Look, it's done exactly what I thought it would. It's dipped in the middle, and I quite like that. Okay, there's still a teeny bit of wobble in there. I put a skewer through it, you can see there, and on the sides, it's come out dry. You must leave it to cool in the tray fully. But we need the oven. Oh my gosh, this is gonna drop, this is gonna drop. <laughs> oh, how did that not drop? Wow. These are going in now until the bacon is nice and cooked through. Last up, we are doing a barbecue chicken sandwich. Uh, this is bullseye sauce, and the reason I went for this one today is because it was a smoky bacon one. So again, like the cream cheese, this is just gonna add another bit of flavor into our chicken whilst we're stuck with three ingredients. The other ingredients are some nice brioche buns, and of course, a barbecue chicken sandwich is gonna need chicken. I actually went for thighs, because they're cheaper and actually a bit more meatier. Oof. Now, there's one thing I want to tell you that I was going to do, and the reason I went for thighs in the end, I'm like, that's cool, but I was going to go for chicken breast and I was going to poach chicken. I don't know if you've ever done that, but that would have required me the fourth ingredient, water. So we're just going to griddle them without oil. <laughs> uh, also, for the way we're going to do the barbecue sauce, if you have some water to hand, you might want to dilute it a little bit. We're going to go hardcore. All right. We're doing pretty well today. You could say we're on a roll. In fact, this is a brioche roll. Uh, the only thing I need to do is just bear in mind the bacon uh, jalapeno poppers are cooking there. It smells so good, so I'm not gonna forget the smell. I just don't want to burn. <laughs> so, this is a chicken thigh. As you can see, if you just let it naturally roll out, you've got quite a nice little sheet. See, they roll out quite flat, so they'll cook quite quickly, but the other thing you can do, like the chicken breast, bit of baking parchment on top, Whack, 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 stress reliever. Very good indeed, makes it nice and thin. But we will grill them like this. But first up, let's do the buns. All right, we're gonna get this pan hot. And there's a fear of getting it too hot because we're not really using oil. We have to use the natural oils from the chicken uh, that it might stick to this pan, but we'll just have to go with it. Yours will look better than mine, as I say. But there's no harm now, if you want to, whilst it warms up in just sticking uh, the bread sides down, face side down, because we're trying to maximise the flavour. So by just having it, you know, that's why you go to McDonald's to get it toasted. Not only does it stop the sauce soaking in, but by charring it, aka burning it, that does actually increase the flavour. So any chance we've got here to add flavour by natural steps like this, 
We're doing it. Did you enjoy my lecture on... Uh, no, you didn't. Let's have a little look. Oh, yeah, baby. Check that out. Huh? Suntan. Flavour and protection from drooping in the sauce. Ooh, the second batch came out even better. Now, this might sound weird, and obviously if you're using oil, you'll be fine, but I'm gonna let this pan cool down before sticking the chicken in. If I stick that in right now, it will cling to it. All right, I uh, thought I'd just try and grab a bit more of my uh, coffee, but I'm gonna just pick up maybe two, and uh, you can see there wasn't a sizzle there because I might gonna get, no, I'll do two at a time. And I, I really want to try and get some nice char on it, like these. Alright. Oh yeah, that'll do. I'm relieved because the actual fats from the chicken are coming out and lubricating the pan. It is extremely smoky. <laughs> the bacon is, is done. I'm going to bring that out. Oh, the caramelization of that chicken is going to ram it full of flavour. Look at these. I'm going to stick them up there out of the way. What we can do is just cut it slightly, which is also another good way of making sure it's cooked through, <laughs> into chunks. So we're gonna grab our barbecue sauce, and I'm gonna put about three tablespoons in there. This is where water would be really helpful to thin it out, so because there's a sugar content in this, it will caramelize quickly and thicken. We want it to be thick and grip it, but then just having water to hand will kind of loosen it up if you need to, and kind of make it a bit more drizzly if you want that effect, which I normally do, but I can't due to the rules of this video. We'll stir it around to just basically warm through this sauce. We're not gonna marinate it in for hours and hours, which of course you could do. I'm just showing you what you can do with free ingredients. And that's it, no joke, a minute later, the steam, the caramelization from that sugar being in there, it wants to thicken and potentially burn quite quick. So let's get it off the heat whilst it's nice and warmed. I'm just laying our barbecue chicken on top. Some nice, Crunchy coleslaw right now would go down an absolute storm. I'm gonna lift that bit up. That is a big old bit. Look at that. And then our charred lid on top. Oh, the three ingredient barbecue chicken sandwich. Look at that thing. Oh. So whilst I've got you here, uh, I just wanna show you the jalapeno poppers. I put them into this like basket thing I once got given, but look, the bacon is all charred and caramelized. The cream cheese has stayed in place inside the chili. They look amazing. And I've just literally got some more cream cheese. Not very pretty, I know, but I stuck it in a pot like that. So you can dunk that in that, and that's still three ingredients. So we've got the poppers, barbecue chicken sandwich, and the lemonade, which I've completely forgotten about. And we got a cake. The chocolate cake is finished off with a few of the chocolate orange segments just overlapped on each other like this. I've just got some extra melted chocolate orange that I'm just drizzling up and down it. I don't know if I can wait for it to be chilled, to be honest. <laughs> oh, that's what we want. There should be a gooiness in the middle. When you put that in the fridge, it will turn to more of like a moussey vibe, but I kind of like that, the looseness of it, you know? It's not falling apart, it's not droopy, it's good. It's got the right set on it. Yes. So, the jalapeno popper. Oh, in, in the cream cheese. Oh. Oh, wow. It reminds me of a pizza. I really like that caramelized onion cream cheese as well. That's really hot. Oh my God. I don't have jalapenos that often, but it reminds me of a barbecue pizza that a company called Romano's do quite often that I've had from time to time. Why don't I uh, try and cool my mouth down with some honey lemonade? Oh, that is super refreshing. There's still a little bit of sort of lemony chunks in it, but they all pass through the sieve nice and fine. But like I say, if you don't want it as bitter, take the pith and stuff off the lemon before you do it. Just grate it and just get the juice, all right? Oh my gosh, the charness of the bun as well. Mm. 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 The chicken is charred, tender, soft and juicy. Also the charring in the bun comes through and that barbecue sauce with the bacon vibe. Wow, that is insane. If there's one message I want you to take away from this video is actually not only do you want to see more of these because I'm happy to do more, but also the fact that this is just three ingredients. Now holding back the water and all that stuff. Like imagine what you could do with like four or five and that's up to you guys. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. That is so good. The moistness, that sort of, the sort of semi-cooked stuff in the middle, which is ideal. It's its own self-sourcing chocolate orange cake. I don't know which one of those is my favorite. They are all really, really good. 
in their own way, just like you. And if you want to see more of these, I'm happy to do, I'm, oh, I'm happy to do more. So give it a go, send me your snaps, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. I know I said send us your snaps. Um, I know it's Valentine's Day and all, but please, just food, right?